Javed Saab is solidly grounded in social activism and as we know has a social and political conscience which was an important aspect of all of, of, all of Rai's work, his cinema and his uh, other work. Javed Saab is famous for various other reasons, uh, all kinds of reasons. He's a much awarded person, as we know, uh, to younger people. He could be famous as um, Faranatha's father. Um, to, uh, to a certain kind of admiring audience, he could be famous as Shavana Azmi's husband. At a certain point of life, all of us have to live multiple identities. But it is now my most pleasant duty to invite Javed Saab to speak on the broad theme of Ajo Shoptojit, Rai today. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Javed Akhtar. Distinguished personalities on the dais, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I think I owe a word of thanks to Mr. Chatterjee for his kind and generous introduction. And then allow me to tell you a small story. There was a man who went to a psychiatrist and said, Doc, I have a serious problem. I suffer with acute inferiority complex and see if you can do anything about it. The doctor said, all right, you give me your life history, I'll go through it and come tomorrow, we'll see what we can do. And next day when that man went back, the doctor was all smiles. And the doctor said, I have very good news for you. You don't have any inferiority complex, actually you are inferior. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Today, my sense of inadequacy, I am quite convinced, is not based on any complex. It is only uh, the right assessment of my own capability and the magnitude of the topic. But I suppose everybody rises to his level of inadequacy. This is my day. Although Mother Nature has tried her best to stop me, you must have noticed that. You know, I think for an average Indian, average synagogue in any part of India, when we read this name or when we hear this name, Shatrajit Rai, a collage of images comes in front of us. Patar Panchali, Aparajito, Apur Sansar, Charu Litha, Prati Dwandi, Middle Man, Jalsa Ghar. And you get totally overwhelmed. And you realize that it is human nature, it is perhaps a compulsion with us, that we have to logicalize everything, rationalize everything, try to understand the process, try to understand the phenomenons. But sometimes we fail. Because I suppose life is not as linear and particularly art as many other things are. Human progress in many fields, in many avenues, is logical, organic, rational. You can understand it. In 1903, Wright brothers make an aircraft and then comes another model and then comes another model and you reach aircraft, spacecraft that can land on moon and Mars. But you can see the process. You can see the chain and every model, at every stage, the aircraft, or an automobile, or a television, or a transistor, or a computer, has a model earlier and another model afterwards. 
somehow more, 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 more often than not. That is how human progress has also taken place. But once in a while, this logic, this rationality takes a very bad pity. Comes a person who doesn't it seem to be the part of this organic growth. Comes a Shakespeare, a Beethoven, a Michael Etcher, a Shatyajit Ray. And we try to rationalize it. We try to understand them. But genius is an element which till today we have not been able to solve or understand or logicalize. People have written a lot. Sometimes we talk of Renoir and Dissica who inspired him. I don't believe that. It is like giving credit of law of gravitation 